Good evening, guys. This will be the second part of our introduction to forces. We're going to do two quick things. The first part is how we name forces. Um, we'll follow a very specific um, set of parameters as we learn how to name forces um, between different objects. And then the second piece is we're going to learn what a system schema is. These will all be relevant to us tomorrow as we dive into um, some of our first explorations around forces. Um, our first piece around naming forces, if you'll recall from our video yesterday, the interaction between two objects is how we're going to define forces. It's very, very broad. Um, but we have a very specific way in which we're going to name forces, at least for a while, because that's going to be what um, allows us to really understand which two objects are interacting with one another. So this would be a good um, statement to write down into your notes for this video. Um, I'll go through each of the pieces in brackets. These are sort of the you have to decide what goes in the bracket piece, and then once we'll, uh, when we finish, we'll end up with a full statement um, that tells us about forces that might be interacting. So let's walk through what each of the brackets means. The first bracket, um, you decide whether or not the force you're talking about is a contact or non-contact force. It's very easy um, up front um, because we only know one non-contact force, that's the force of gravity. That just means that the two objects don't have to be touching in order for there to be a force. All the other forces in our list Friction, the normal force, uh, tension force, and spring forces have to be in contact, um, and they'll all be labeled as such. Once you've figured out whether it's a contact or non-contact force, you just label the type of force that's present. Again, it'd be one of the five that we named in last uh, night's video. And so it would read for, let's say, gravity, it'd say the non-contact gravitational force, V, and then we have two selections to make. So the first selection is the name of the object that is exerting the force. And the second selection is the name of the object that's experiencing the force. Now that part's a little weird. Let's do an example to help you out with that. So I found this awesome mug sitting on the shelf over there. And um, let's pretend that we were looking at uh, the force of gravity that exists on this mug right now. So how would we name that? Well, first I would say the non-contact gravitational force, because I'm talking about how gravity is attracting this object to the Earth. The non-contact gravitational force, V, object exerting the force. So I have to think, what is the object in this scenario that exerts the force on the mug? And that's the Earth in this case. The Earth supplies the force of gravity. Therefore, I would say, the non-contact gravitational force, the Earth exerts on the object experiencing force, that would be the mug, and so the full statement would read the non-contact gravitational force the Earth exerts on the mug. And that would help me identify what force is on this mug. We'll practice that much more and in much more detail tomorrow. Now we're going to learn about how we can track all the different forces that might be on an object like this mug. And so, in order to do that, this side. We're going to talk about something called a system schema. A system schema, by definition, is a diagram that allows us to track all of the interactions between different objects um, once we've identified what object we're going to look at. I think the other part of this definition that's, that's easiest to define uh, is for us to actually go through an example of what a system schema would look like. Um, one of the things that you'll see as we do this are that it will meet these three criteria. It will contain all of the relevant objects. You will see some lines that I draw representing different forces. And then the forces will all be identified by name. So what does that look like? Well, let's take the mug again. And the mug right now is sitting on top of a book. The book is sitting on top of this chair. This chair is sitting on top of the earth, uh, on the floor. Um, so there's lots of interactions happening. So the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to actually draw all of the objects as circles with their labels. So here's how that looks. One object would be the mug. Another object would be this book. Another object would be this chair. Another object would be the earth. sitting on top of one another. And I look, and, and when I think about this, this mug, that's really all the objects that I see. There, I could do uh, some other objects, though. There are other objects in this room. Uh, if I counted my marker that's sitting here on the chair, I could also say the marker. 
and I could put that on my board. I could also say, I'm going to move my mug so you can see, um, I could say that the whiteboard is actually also here because it's present, so whiteboard. And this is sort of a list of all of the relevant objects that are present when I look at this mug. So that's the first step of a system schema is to identify all the different objects. The second part is to identify which objects are interacting with one another. And so if I look, one thing that conveniently happens in almost every scenario is that the Earth interacts with all of these objects because the Earth exerts a force of gravity on them. And so to show that force of gravity, I actually draw a line between the Earth and all of these objects. This is the line that represents the force between those objects. And I'm going to label all of those with an F sub little g. F sub little g telling us what kind of force it is. So the Earth exerts a gravitational force on all of those objects. Okay. Now let's look at what other forces are involved here. Well, the book... Well, let's start back with the mug. The mug is sitting on top of the book. So let's draw a line between those two. And if I had to identify what force is here, well, it's really a contact force between the book and the mug, and it's perpendicular to the surface, so I would say this is the normal force between those two. I would then say the mug, um, because it's interacting with the book, it's interacting with the earth, there's not really anything else that the mug is directly in contact with, but the book is definitely in contact with the chair. And again, I would say that's the normal force because it's a contact push, pushing force. Um, that puts the chair in contact with the book, and then it's also feeling the force of gravity from the earth. And then if I continue this out, the chair um, isn't really... Oh, it is touching something else. It's touching the whiteboard. That's through the normal force. So the whiteboard is resting on top of the chair. The chair is also touching the marker because the marker is resting on top of the chair. And so you see what I'm doing is essentially just identifying all the forces that exist on a certain object. Now I can check any of these at any time by saying, is that representative of all the forces that are present? So for the whiteboard, yes, it feels gravity from the earth. It also feels the normal force from the chair. That aligns with what I see in my picture. And so this is what we'll call a system schema. And you'll notice that we have all the relevant objects. We have lines that represent forces. Forces are all being identified. We will learn how to use this as an analytical tool in the coming days, um, but I wanted you to have a chance to see how we drew one um, for tomorrow, because this will be a very helpful tool. Um, so please make sure you have your notes ready to go for tomorrow, and we will talk more about this then.